Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and this is another real history video. I'm going to be looking at the top five worst tanks ever produced or designed or considered during World War II. Some of which may surprise you, but hey, this is not just my opinion, quite a few of the tank experts also agree that some of these tanks were just absolutely crazy. Now I'm going to do this over a five video series, looking at each tank in turn. And without any further ado, let's start off with the least worst on the list at number five. The Yag Panzer, or what is also known as the Yag Tiger, or the Hunting Tiger. The Yag Tiger is a tank based upon the hull and chassis of the Tiger II. Germany's last combat heavy tank. But the Jag Tiger was a casemate tank destroyer. For some reason, the Germans were infatuated with casemate TDs, and all of its tanks, with the notable exception of the Tiger I, they were destined to be turned into some form of fixed casemate tank destroyer. Think the Jag Panther IV, think the Jag Panther etc etc and you get the general idea. Now the main idea behind this in the German strategy thinking was to have an effective ambush weapon and to take an already proven design and to have basically a bigger gun with more armour, ergo more destructive power. Why the Germans were infatuated with this however only the Germans know but they absolutely became crazy about having these type of tank destroyers. The thing is, these type of tanks have a very, very limited role on the battlefield. Side armor wise and rear, they are paper thin. Everything is on the front. And as you can see with a fixed casemate, then the gun only really can point the one way. It's, it's that straightforward. So these things are effectively haul down ambush weapons waiting for the enemy to come to them. Like I said, this tank is based on the Tiger II, a German heavy tank that entered service in 1944 and first saw action during Operation Goodwood where it proved to have a substantial advantage over the Western Allied tanks. However, it did have a massive downside, notably its weight, lack of resources in Germany in both men and material. The Germans, however, didn't worry about such things and decided that, well, we've got a formidable heavy in the Tiger II, which isn't exactly perfect. It keeps breaking down and it's too heavy. So, hey, what the heck? Let's build a bigger tank that's much heavier with a bigger gun and everything will be fine, bizarrely. So they came up with the Yag Tiger, which happened to be the heaviest combat tank ever to see any action during World War II. A distinction, however, that was going to give it all of its problems. The power unit with inside the, tiger, the Yag Tiger was actually the Maybach HL230P30, the exact same power unit that was in both the Tiger I and the Tiger II. And the Germans knew from bitter experience that the power unit struggled in the Tiger II because of its weight, which was around 68 tons, which was a lot more than the Tiger I, which came in at just shy of 53 tons. But that didn't worry the Germans, so they brought in the Yang Tiger, which weighed a whopping 72 tons, putting incredible strain on the power unit. The weight and strain upon the engine also reduced the tank to basically a crawl, which was not a good thing at this stage of the war, especially with Allied air superiority, and these tanks were easily picked off by Allied air attack. Engine problems notwithstanding, the weight of this tank prevented it from traversing most terrain, especially bridges and swampy ground, which was pretty common in the areas that it was due to operate as the Reich was vastly shrinking by the time this tank came into action. Admittedly, it did have vastly superior and very thick frontal armour and a fantastic gun, but both were completely useless if the tank couldn't get to the position that it was needed to be in to actually utilise and take advantage of its frontal armour and amazing weaponry. It has been reported that Otto Cadius, Germany's famed tank ace, found the tank absolutely amazing. 
but only when it was stationary and in a fixed position. But it was utterly useless on the move. The vibrations in the tank would literally shake the breech block apart. Not only that, it was totally unreliable and really vulnerable. Germany produced 73 of these monsters and 20% were destroyed in action with the remaining 80% either being captured or destroyed by their own crews, which is utterly bizarre. There are in fact more captured and surviving Jag Tigers than there are Tiger Ones, comparatively speaking, which is incredibly odd considering that there were 1,000 347 Tiger Ones produced by the Germans during the war. The Jag Tiger for me is one of those tanks and designs that proves that bigger is not necessarily better. The Germans would have been better off producing more Tiger Twos, methinks, rather than squandering their time producing these. However, it also has to be noted that resources were also running out inside Germany especially things like ball bearings, which they needed to make the turrets of the Tiger Twos. That's what they need to make them turn. So that could be a factor for why they put it on a fixed casemate. I'm just playing devil's advocate. The chances are it wasn't because the Germans did absolutely love making these fixed casemate tank destroyers. Whatever the reason was, the Jag Tiger remains one of those tanks that looks formidable on paper but is absolutely useless in real life. Totally ineffective in any combat situation, completely unreliable and a complete and utter waste of resources in producing these things. They were formidable in certain respects, don't get me wrong, but Icarius is clear on that, but those respects were very limited and its role was extremely limited indeed. Anyway, I have been Fujit. That has been a brief look at one of the worst tanks to have come out of World War II for various reasons. And as I said, I am not the only person to think that. David Fletcher, previously of Bobbington Tank Museum, has this tank at number two on his list of worst tanks ever produced, funnily enough. This one for me though sits at number five and we will be dealing with number four in another video. So until then, I hope you enjoyed the content. If so, by all means comment and like and everything below. Please press subscribe. It's a nice thing to do and it costs you nothing and puts a smile on my face. And all I will say is stay safe out there and hopefully see you again soon. Peace.